What's going on my friends? It's Dr. Gaines here and in this video I'm going to share some of my secret sauce with you on how you could instantly improve your shoulder mobility in as little as 10 minutes with just three exercises. So I'm going to show you those exercises, explain how to do them properly, explain why they help so much in improving your overhead shoulder mobility, then show you how you could sequence them in order so you could improve your shoulder mobility in as little as 10 minutes and see drastic change in your performance and in your gains. So let's get it started here. I'll pull up my laptop and I'll explain the exercises as I'm going through them. So before we get started, you can see my before, really poor overhead mobility. And I was kind of stuck overhead on that position. And in the after, drastically, drastically different. So these were only taken about 10 or 15 minutes apart. And as you can see, the left picture was the before. My arms aren't even vertical overhead. There's a nice angle between my torso and my arms and those arms are in front of my ears, and I'm even um, hyperextending on my lower back a little bit more. You can kind of see that anterior pelvic tilt a little bit. And on the picture on the right, it's just a lot more aligned. Belly button is sucked in. Arms are pretty tight overhead. And good alignment. It's still not perfect. It's something I do have to improve on. And that's another disclaimer with this mobility routine. It will drastically increase your mobility and it's going to get a lot better for that time being. So the best time to do it is before your workout. So during the workout, the exercises you do, the movements that you do are going to have a little bit better shoulder mobility. So it's going to just stick with you a little bit longer. So this is best to be done before your workouts because once you unlock that overhead mobility before your workout, it's just going to help engrave that motor pattern and teach your body how to keep that overhead mobility. So I definitely recommend doing it before upper body days at least two or three times a week. Three times a week is ideal. But let's continue here. So let's get straight to it. The first exercise you should be doing is just a weighted overhead hold. So just like a normal overhead press. And as you can see, you don't want to arch that lower back. You want to keep those arms nice and straight overhead. You don't want to let those arms bend. Press it up if you notice that's happening. And you want to keep that good posture. Your chest up, belly button sucked in. That's the key. You want to keep your belly button sucked in and tuck your tailbone forward. So you can have not the anterior tilt, maybe even a little bit of a posterior tilt instead. But nice engaged core, engaged glutes, arms locked overhead, and just holding that position. When you're doing this exercise, especially if you have poor mobility, you might need to start a little bit wider on the grips with the barbell. So if the mobility is really tough, take a wider grip with your stand or take a wider grip with your hands. And then as you get better and better, or maybe after a few rounds, you start to bring those hands a little bit closer because that's what's going to challenge your overhead mobility even more. So you want to hold this somewhere between 30 seconds and one minute. The longer, the better. If you could go for the full minute with good form, that's the key, go for the full minute. But if you feel your form starts to deteriorate after about 30 seconds, only hold the 30 seconds. So moving on to our next exercise here, it's actually a dead hang, but a little bit differently than your normal dead hang. You're gonna first wanna make sure you're using an underhand grip. That supinated grip is gonna give you such a better stretch on your lats here and really challenge your overhead mobility more than the overhead grip. But the second key factor you wanna pay attention to here is that you want your feet to be able to be touching the floor. So you want your knees to be slightly bent and you wanna be able to be either touching the floor or a small box or something behind you. And the purpose of doing that is so you could really focus on the stretch of the lats. If you don't have something to support your feet on, you're gonna start using a lot of grip training and it's gonna be more like uh, active exercise rather than the stretch. So by letting your feet or legs rest on something, you don't have to focus on squeezing the bar so hard and you can really focus on breathing, relaxing, and loosening up the lats so you can get that good stretch. And the third exercise we're going to focus on is just an overhead neurokinetic therapy press. So long jumbo, long jumbo name there, doesn't really have a technical name. But let me explain the concept on this one. As you saw in the video, similar concept to that overhead press. You want to suck your belly button in, drive your lower back against the floor, 
And now when you're doing that, you keep those arms nice and straight. You want to avoid a bend of the elbow. If there's a slight bend, because it has to be there because of your lack of mobility, that's okay. But your mission should be to really avoid the bend of the elbow. And then while your arms are straight, you're going to press them up against an elevated surface. So you're trying to move them overhead as if you're doing a full overhead extension, but you're pressing it against something. The whole purpose of doing that is actually to train your motor pathways in your brain to teach you how to fire properly in an overhead position. Because oftentimes the mind-body connection isn't there and when we're trying to get into that overhead extension, our body physically does not understand how to properly fire to allow our arms to move overhead. So with this neurokinetic therapy stretch, you're teaching your mind to fire in an overhead position without actually having to physically get there. So it's training your nervous system rather than your muscles to move in that overhead position. So if you're getting pretty good at it, you could grab a surface that's a little bit smaller or even a little bit more narrow for your hands and do the same thing. Belly button sucked in, pressing your lower back against the floor, and you really want to press down against the object. If it's feeling difficult, if it's feeling challenging to press down against the object, you want to grab an object that's a little bit higher because you want to be able to maintain the overhead position and maintain that active press. It shouldn't be passive. It should be active. You should be pressing down against the bench or the surface that's behind you while sucking your belly button in and flattening your back against the floor. You're even gonna feel as if this is an exercise or an isometric or a workout, and that's how it should feel. So you wanna do this anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds. So there you have it, my friends. If you implement those three exercises into your overhead mobility training, it's going to instantly, within 10 minutes, improve your overhead mobility. How I strongly recommend doing it is in the same order that I presented it in this video. You start with the overhead shoulder press and you hold that position for 30 seconds to a minute. As soon as you finish, you move on to the dead hangs with the supinated grip and allowing your feet to relax on a surface or on a bench or on a box. And you hold that one anywhere between 20 seconds and one minute. And right when you finish that one, you move on to the final exercise, which is a neurokinetic therapy stretch where you're going to be pressing actively against something, trying to force that overhead range of motion while pressing against something that's preventing you from getting into that full position. Now, let me explain why these exercises work so well in improving overhead mobility as opposed to static stretching. There's two main reasons that we don't have flexibility or mobility, and one of them is tightness of the muscles. That one is not actually as big as a factor as many people will think. The second factor plays a much stronger role, and that's our nervous system. So our CNS, our central nervous system, oftentimes locks or restricts us from moving in certain ranges of motion to protect us. And the reason it does this is because we're not conditioned or we're not trained in moving that range of motion. We've all heard the saying, you use it or you lose it. That's the exact concept that happens here. If we're not actively using our overhead range of motion, our body does not feel purpose to maintain overhead range of motion. So we begin to lose it. And then one day when we try to reach overhead, we realize it's very restricted because we've never used it. We've never gone there and our body seems no purpose. So we'd rather lock our muscles and prevent us from getting into that position than taking the potential risk of injuring ourselves by moving overhead or moving in that position. So the first exercise is the weighted overhead press isometric hold, and that's teaching our body that it's safe to hold weight overhead and it's safe to really move those arms back in an overhead position and that we're not going to get hurt, especially because we're using a lighter load. But by holding that position there, it's firing in our brain to our muscles, teaching us how to hold overhead and teaching us that we can safely hold overhead. The second movement, it's a little bit more of a stretch, but in my opinion, it's probably the best stretch for overhead mobility. Most people struggle with overhead mobility and most people really struggle with that supinated or underhand grip and overhead mobility. So that stretch in particular is a serious stretch for your lats, for your shoulders, for your forearms, for your biceps, for your wrists even. And it's just an awesome all-inclusive stretch that I personally believe is the best passive stretch when it comes to unlocking your shoulder mobility. And the third exercise this one, in my opinion, is the most valuable one, and it's where the magic happens. It's the neurokinetic therapy stretch. Again, as I mentioned, a major factor in our restricted mobility 
is the fact that our nervous system does not allow us to move in certain positions for our safety. So when we're trying to hit that overhead position and we're hitting a block before we get there, but we're still pressing against that block in order to fire those motor neurons, it's teaching our body how to properly move in that direction and it's teaching our body that it's safe to move in that direction because it's almost like an overstimulation of that movement pattern. We're not even in the position yet, but our body keeps firing to tell us to get in the position. Those three exercises are major in improving your shoulder mobility. And if you do each one for the ranges I mentioned, anywhere between 30 seconds and one minute, back to back for three to four rounds before your workout, I guarantee you're going to have amazing results in your shoulder mobility and even in your performance. So do that consistently about two to three times a week. I do recommend three times and I guarantee you're going to see massive results in the long run. So there you have it, my friends. Those are the secrets in improving your shoulder mobility. I guarantee these three exercises will seriously unlock that mobility you thought you never had. So if you liked the video, make sure you like the video, comment, subscribe. And I'll make sure to share more of the secret sauce in the future. And I'll catch you all next time.